Hi, my name is Søren, and in this video, we will take a look at the ghosting view. Now, the ghosting view contains settings for displaying skeleton ghosts, also known as onion skinning. Ghosting allows skeleton poses from preceding or subsequent timeline positions to be seen at the same time. These poses can then be considered when making decisions about the current pose. The frame section controls ghosts that are shown for preceding or subsequent frames. When before is checked, ghosts are shown for preceding frames, and when after is checked, ghosts are shown for subsequent frames. The before frames and after frames sliders control how far behind and ahead to draw ghosts. The frame step slider sets how often a ghost is drawn for these frames. Fractional values may be typed into any of the slider text boxes. For example, with after frames set to 6 and frame step set to 3, two ghost poses will be drawn, one 3 frames ahead of the current frame and one 6 frames ahead of the current frame. In the dope sheet or timeline view, the before and after frame settings can be seen together with the current frame indicator as colored lines. The frame step is indicated by small vertical lines at each frame step. The keyframes section is identical to the frames section, except ghosts are only shown for frames that have a key set. For example, with after frame set to 6 and keyframe step set to 1, a ghost will be drawn for all frames that have a key within the next 6 frames. The motion vectors section enables you to draw motion lines for mesh and region attachments. Motion vectors display how much and in which direction vertices move over time and can be helpful to visualize speed. For example, if before frames are set to 6, we can see how far vertex moves in those 6 frames. If before frames are set to 1, we can see how far vertex moves in 1 frame. The threshold setting will hide motion vectors smaller than the threshold. If set to 0, all motion vectors will be drawn. The color settings are identical to the frame section. The left color button sets the color to tint ghosts from preceding frames. The right color button sets the color to tint ghosts from subsequent frames. Setting color to white causes the ghost to be rendered without tint. The left select box controls how ghost attachments are displayed. Setting it to none means no attachment are displayed. Setting it to images means attachment images are rendered normally. And setting it to solid will render attachment images using a solid color. This setting can use significant GPU resources when many ghosts are displayed. The right select box controls outlines for ghost attachments. First we have none, which means no outlines are displayed. Then silhouette, which will outline the entire ghost. And last we have x-ray, which outlines each attachment. Both silhouette and x-ray can use significant GPU resources when many ghosts are displayed. When on top is checked, the ghosts are drawn on top of the skeleton. When loop is checked and repeat is enabled for the timeline, ghosts will be shown past the start and end of the animation. The X offset and Y offset sliders control the drawing position of the ghosts on the X and Y axes, which has a number of uses. An offset can make it easier to see the ghosts, otherwise they can be difficult to see when drawn on top of each other. The offset can be used to simulate the speed the skeleton would be moving at runtime. The offset is defined as pixels per frame. Spine uses 30 frames per second, so the speed the skeleton will be moving at runtime can easily be converted to pixels per frame. Once the ghosts have an X offset that matches the skeleton speed at runtime, 
For a running or walking animation, the ghost will show if the feet are sliding. The animation matches the X offset perfectly when all of the ghost's feet land in the same position. If the feet will slide at runtime, the ghost's feet will not land in the same position. In this case, the animation needs to be scaled slower or faster to match the X offset or the X offset needs to be adjusted to match the animation. We can use the Y offset in a similar way, for example, for a character that jumps. Please note that changing the offset has no influence on motion vectors. When anchor is enabled, the ghosts aren't animating and it can be easy to see how the skeleton is animating. This is especially true when frame step is greater than 1. Anchor only affects frames ghosts. Keyframes ghosts are always anchored. When anchor is unchecked, ghosts are drawn relative to the current frame. This means the ghosts animate as the skeleton does. They are just shifted in time. When offset is used, the ghosts are always drawn at a fixed distance from the skeleton. For example, if anchor is unchecked, frame step is 3, before frames is 6 and the current timeline position is frame 10.5, the ghosts are drawn using frames 7.5 and 4.5. When anchor is checked, ghosts are drawn at fixed intervals starting from frame 0. This means the ghost don't animate as the skeleton does. When offset is used, the distance the ghosts are drawn from the skeleton shows how much time until the skeleton matches the ghost's pose. For example, if anchor is checked, frame step is 3, then ghosts will only ever be drawn at frames 0, 3, 6, 9, 12 and so on. This means if before frames is 6 and the current timeline position is frame 10.5, the ghosts are drawn at frame 9 and 6. Ghosting can be configured to only show ghosts for the attachment of the selected bones by clicking the Bones button. The Lock button prevents the ghosted bones from changing and the Refresh button updates the ghosted bones to the current selection. If no bones are selected, all attachments are shown. I hope this video has been helpful and I hope to see you again for the next one. Bye for now.